you guys were in Crater Town, and uh, a deal went south, went sour. Not because of the person you're dealing with, it was Rutha, but it went south because the Rangers interfered, and you had to make it out with your lives as they came in and they were seeking Rutha, who was the one that you were dealing with. Here. So, you met with Rutha, who showed you some steel net technology. She said she had found this huge payload, and she had made it out of there just before the Rangers arrived. But they saw her leave, and they they've been tracking her down. And when she finally poked her head out of a hidey hole. It resulted in them chasing her down to that spot and you guys having to fend them off and escape for your lives. She revealed that what she found was indeed basically a treasure map. It was a combination lock um, that was on this huge vault and for this big wig of steel net that was in this kind of high rise apartment. And she had made her way up the unstable building to uh, collect what she could before she was chased out. And that combination for the lock was written, handwritten, on the back of a painting she managed to grab on the way out. So now the rangers are seeking uh, Rutha, seeking that combination, because as she observed, that vault was heavy duty. And simply trying to break into it with conventional means would be difficult, if not impossible. But they are persistent buggers, so they may find a way yet. You all managed to escape with your lives, barely, as you made your way out to her safe house out in the waste um, outside of the city. I imagine this is kind of a half-buried storage container, kind of the back of an 18-wheeler, classic post-apocalyptic, you know, hideout. And you managed to rendezvous on the way with uh, the other member of your crew, and you took... Um, you took a counsel with Rutha as you uh, healed your wounds and planned your next step. You knew that it is time to go and time was running out for the stealthy approach to get to the apartment with the combination and try to beat the rangers to the score. Part of this, again, is not just becoming wealthy. Part of it is keeping uh, what could be quite potent technology out of the hands of less than self-controlled characters, such as the Rangers, such as other factions of the Waste that would use this for their own powerful, uh, their own power structures rather than for the good of the Waste. That was one of the reasons that she contacted Jax, the chronicler and historian, as they had done dealings with before, and she trusted Jax to seek this out as a heroic venture rather than just uh, being selfish like so many in the waste would be. So you guys made a plan to go into the city. You noticed that Rutha was nervous as you made your plan and kind of um, loaded up your truck with what you could carry. You were able to get, uh, she as a slagger would have a fine supply of, of, of things to protect you from the toxic environment of the rune. Again, the toxicity is not just like, oh, you're dead, but it, it, it worms its way into your mind until you become paranoid and feral, uh, becoming what they call howlers, developing what they call breakneck. And um, to prevent that, you wear, you know, air filtration. Now, you guys, uh, if you'll allow me a little bit of abstractness, each of you have been outfitted with gas masks. Um, you've been outfitted to protect yourselves against the environment and all of your supplies and all that she could muster will supply your whole party for 20 rounds. Okay. And it's going to be like a shared resource. Imagine it broken down into different filters. You can pop into the gas mask, uh, maybe a spare gas mask if one is completely destroyed. But if conditions worsen for you, and you know thing you lose some of your supplies then that timer goes down of how long you can make it there with, with without protection right so 
just it's going to be abstracted where you know in combat it's going to go down one round and that's going to be a quicker amount of time because you're under duress you're breathing heavier you would be burning through the filtration quicker the environment's more toxic but traveling and kind of being able to steady your, your pace it would it would still just cost you a round right so it's just 20 rounds. Uh, so we're gonna stick to rounds and we're just gonna be counting down. And that's gonna kind of be the big timer. As you guys know, we you only have so much time um, in the rune before you need to either seek out and, and get more supplies or it's not gonna result in instant death or instant uh, onset of breakneck, but it will make things more difficult and begin to um, take its effect. So you have some time yet with 20 rounds for your whole party. We'll see how well that lasts you. So, so you outfit your supplies, you're fitting your masks, you know, you're getting all the straps kind of set uh, into place. And uh, I don't know if any of you have actually worn a gas mask at all. Uh, my father is in the military and uh, they are uncomfortable and difficult to deal with and that raises that makes everything more difficult it's hard to breathe it's hard to see so the target is just going to rest at 15 and you know that your task before you is just any precise things you need to do are going to be more difficult you make your way to the edge of the town now Jax has been consulting with rutha and getting notes for the journey ahead. Uh, she has her own notebook that she's been taking notes of her journeys into the rune and taking notes as she goes in. Now she, you, you, you go, you arrive, but Rutha, who's been driving, remains glued to the wheel. And she turns to your to the group and she's like, even she she says to the effect, even being on the edge of the city, I I simply. I don't think I can make another trip. My mind, it's its too much. And the, I think, I think I'll lose my mind if I, if I go in there just one more time. Like she's, she's had made a career out of this and, and with the duress and the trauma that she faced with the, you know, the near death experience, she's like, I, I think I'm a liability more than I'm a help. And she kind of sits there frozen to the wheel, eyes kind of glazed over. Any of you say anything? What's your response? I think that's reasonable and fair. Um, you gotta watch your back. I mean, the rangers are after you, so he's gonna <coughs> he's gonna offer Ruth of the the briefcase that she recovered with the steel net tech. If the rangers come knocking. Yeah, you know, even in its spent quality, it would still be valuable as an artifact of some kind. So it, it's it's less valuable than being used, but still valuable all the same. And uh, she she takes it and she's like, "What? I mean, like, I'm not going. If I can't go with you, what do I do? How, how do I make myself useful?" And she's like, "I I don't know where to go. I don't know who's watching. Like, and she's kind of panicked. You can see the onset of this kind of paranoia." And maybe even that's why she only chose one person out of her entire history. She didn't think through clearly what well, all the options. Her mind is starting to go. Do you have any suggestions of what she could do? Start a new life in Kilo or Beta Sector. Take that, take that, that tech, and <coughs> buy a one-way trip out of here. The Rangers' influence won't go that far. Yeah. Ma Fangs my head cannon he has at least dealt with the Order of the Black Eagle. He's gonna go he, he his down to Kilo Sector, they might be able to help your mind. The order might be able to help somehow with that. He says, you know, I'll it's good advice, I'll take it and I'll I'll make my way best I can and hopefully see you in the future you know and but either way i'm gonna get out of what's coming next whether good or bad and she kind of gives you know a a, a layman salute <coughs> and um she hands over her notebook to Jax, and so you have rutha's notes this will act as like a codex and it'll be easier to have information regarding the 
the rune. And you're not going to be completely lost without the notes. You've conferred and made enough of your own to where you could begin to navigate, but it's going to make it easier. And if that codex, her notes were to be lost, that would make it more difficult to have the proper information. You'd be a little bit more in the dark. Um, but she's like, these are, I mean, this is a career of, of slagger knowledge, diving into the rune, best, best locations, good hideouts you know, what to avoid, what's not. So you, you've been gifted kind of this appendix of knowledge. It takes time to find the information, but, um, and not all of it's there. It's someone's handwritten notes, but certainly, certainly helpful. So you guys kind of file out of the, the van and she says, you know, I'll, I'll take good care of it basically. And, you know, you make a plan for to kind of get out of the city as needed. And, um, and she sets you off into the best entry point into the tunnels of the city that you can find. You leave behind the dim, gray smog of the light of day, and you begin to work your way through the drainage tunnels of the city. <coughs> better down here than out in the street. Good. Dole's at us at from soak in that sun. <laughs> okay. You're working your way through the dark, checking your notes, kind of working your way, and some of it is straightforward. Uh, but then the tunnels begin to diverge. There's one fork, then two, and three. You begin to try to find your way. Jax, of course, is the compendium of knowledge, finding your way. Your gut won't help you here. It's it's dark. It's, um, it's specific knowledge, but he's been conferring and looking at the maps. Essentially, what we're going to do with each leg of travel that you begin to make your way through the tunnels, Jax, is I need you to make a successful intelligence check. And I would love to have, you know, if you want to give a little bit of flavor to it, you are more than welcome to what this looks like. But essentially, uh, if you, you know, are successful in this, your travel time is much more efficient. And if you fail in the intelligence check, you have to do some, you know, winding around. Uh, you, you lose access to maybe a good shortcut. Your travel time increases, as well as open yourself up to other hazards. And that's all I'll say about that. So I'm going to have Jax go first in the order of things, as he's kind of like leading the way in navigation. And then I'm going to have the other three, if you guys want to go ahead and just give a D20 roll, kind of shuffle up initiative. Okay. Be funny if it lines up right where it is already. Ooh. All right. Good. Good start. All right, Jax. Mm. As you kind of work your way through the tunnels and the gloom. Yeah. Well, for this first, um, for this first bit, we want to follow the, we want to follow the general pipes still hanging off the ceiling. I mean, these pipes mm. don't go on forever. They always come up to a hub. Uh, so if we can follow them, we can get to a main hub of the of the pipes rather than one of the offshoots. So they always lead back. Okay. So we'll see. <coughs> see if they're still there. Okay. Um, that is an 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you do have grit if you want to use it. Obviously, it's a precious resource. Just want to remind that's up here. <clears throat> Is it each turn that he has to make the intelligence check? Um, it won't. So basically, there is now you're entering into uh, an encounter, if you will, and then you know as a, a next leg of journey, there'll be additional intelligence checks, and we'll kind of work our way through there. So I follow. So followed along and maybe the pipes are falling down and I don't know which way they go. <laughs> okay. You arrive at an intersection of, of this and you see, unfortunately, you come to the hub that you're describing of the pipes, but then the pipes split in multiple directions. And they, you know, what was at first a genuinely great clue, uh, just a difference of mechanical engineering has resulted in those pipes kind of twisting and winding away that was ill-efficient. Perhaps funding from the city was lacking at that point, and anything that would have made sense no longer makes sense. And you, you start 
kind of worming <laughs> the way around and back and forth. And it, this takes some time. Jax, I need you to roll a d4. We're going to throw out a 1. And that's how many rounds of travel it takes. Oof. Okay. So you kind of sense already you're taking deeper breaths. You're kind of moving your way through. Um, you trust your leader. And you know that without him, it would be even much, that much more difficult. But still, everyone is a little bit more on edge. Everyone takes an additional adrenaline, so you, your adrenaline goes up by one as you kind of warm your way back through. And as you make your way through the through this intersection, something happens. So as you kind of were, as you're kind of working your way through, and you find yourself to the next stage where you, you are clear, you know, Jax, this is this is the right way. You're back on the right path. You also come upon a small alcove. That is, that is up above. <coughs> the tunnels lead through. Work with me on the abstract space here. You know, the okay. as you're kind of working your way through the tunnels here. And uh, you, you find this alcove that's sitting up uh, above, and you <laughs> see signs of life inside. No one is inside that you can see. No, no rustling of movement or anything. It's gloom and dark to make out exactly what it is, but you see that someone's been living here. You see some skulls and trophy heads stuck onto rusty pikes and sticks as you see that kind of marking the territory. And you see, but you also see that wh whoever it is has accumulated uh, a certain amount of gear and items. What do you do as you kind of see down this dark hallway um, in the end, just this small glint of some metal boxes? So, um, Jax, you've kind of navigated. We'll come back around to you. So now we'll go to Fang. I was going to be like, Fang, Dim. Uh, you mm. wanna... <laughs> Sorry. No, yeah. You want to go? Fang, Grin. <laughs> mean. It's he's a mission of. <coughs> Sorry, I saw that. I read the F down there, and I I miss I misspoke. So that goes to Fingrin. Am I saying it right? Oh, Figrin. Figrin. All right. Fingrin. Uh, yeah, I would like to look at uh, whatever seems like it could be choice gear bins, maybe uh, in along next to the orange crates and the stuff next to it. In, in the bearish. Okay. So as you move your way inside of this cove, it is disgusting. It is ill-maintained. The smell itself is just rotten and nasty. There is the fog and the smoke of the rune that has kind of worked its way into this alcove. And as you kind of work your way down, you see, you see small pools of blood where things have been cut and left to bleed and then drug back across the ground. It is uh, quite an assault upon your senses. I need you to go ahead and make just a con roll for the smell and the scene. If you fail the roll, you take an additional journal. I'm plus two con. You good. So you make it and you begin to rummage through. One of the crates is in good condition. Go ahead and give me a D100 roll. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. While I'm working on that, we can go to Thane. As he's rustling through there, I'll come back to what you find. Um, looking for something of worth. What do you got, Thane? Going to let Figurin scavenge. I'm gonna keep an eye on the tunnels around us. Make sure there's nothing coming at us in the moment. <coughs> Go ahead and give me... Um, now, I, I think just taking a look, you would see it. You do see a silhouette of a figure approaching. Um, no details are able to make out. Human in size. Um, 
human in size, and so you can clearly see they are human, and they're they're walking normally. Um, nothing odd about the silhouette, but they're far enough away where um, you can't make out great details, but you're able to keep an eye on them. Him no, and then I take my uh, bow knife out in case something goes down. Okay, so as you're taking a look and you see that silhouette, uh, Thigrin is able to find some oiled leather boots. Easy Those enough. oiled leather boots are in solid condition, wonderful condition. Uh, they are armor and they make movement dex rolls easy. So this would be jumping, dodging, things like that. So not all dexterity, but any sort of mobility dexterity becomes easy. Or yeah, wearing okay. those oiled leather boots. Are they also plus one wearing. defense, did you say? Let me see here. Uh, they are not. No defense okay. bonus. Okay. Yeah. Very handy. <coughs> okay. Find those boots, and that brings us to Dim. So Fang's kind of keeping an eye outside. What do you do, Dim? We can all see this person walking down the hallway. Um, yeah, I think Fang will be able to point out to you the silhouette of the of the person coming. I'm gonna just say over my shoulder to Figrin, kind of in like a stage whisper. Hurry up, dude! We got company. I hear you. I hear. You. Okay. Anything else you want to do? No, I just want to make sure I'm positioned in between this person walking towards us and everybody else. Okay. okay. Uh, I will stay covered uh, <coughs> as best I can uh, so that I have line of sight, but not on my... With a clear shot if I have to over the shoulders and heads of my friends. Okay. So then, uh, you, Jax, you were kind of navigating, but if you want to move and position yourself somewhere, um, you'd be able to do so. So anywhere you want to go. Okay. So you move into the scene as well, and you see, you know, a bed with kind of disheveled uh, blankets, uh, threadbare kind of tossed about uh, where this uh, someone has been sleeping. You see discarded junk laid to the side. You also see a uh, what appears to be a plastic bag filled with something. And the flies appear to be attracted to the bag. I need you to go ahead and make a charisma roll as you kind of walk in and you see that this person has been doing some particularly gruesome work. As you see this scrap metal in front of you was kind of like a workbench that the person was doing this work on. And uh, it's quite nasty we're in, indeed. We're in Pikmin's gallery. No, that's a three. Okay. That's a no-go on charisma. So you take an additional adrenaline. And you're... Gas mask timer ticks down by one. Super creepy. Oh man. So the silhouette becomes clear as this figure approaches the entrance, and um, you see what appears to be a slagger uh, wearing. Uh, a, a, you know, they're what they call a diver's helmet, a, an air supply kind of helmet surrounding an air supply. But you see the hose is hanging loose and the glass in the helmet is cracked, where it's merely providing an aesthetic benefit and it's not actually filtering anything. And you see this person come up and say, Oh, who's there? What? Why are you here? Why? These are my things. What are you doing here? <coughs> and this is speaking to Fang as it's the first to see the doorway. We're, we're, we're not doing anything. We're just. We thought this is abandoned. These are my I'm things. Saying, I've, I I worked hard for these things. Leave them there. Leave them there where they are, and and you can go. But I, I just I've I've worked hard for those things. You can't take them. You can't just take them. So basically, what I what I'm I'm doing is signaling to Jackson Pickering to to let their stuff any stuff go. 
Uh, oh, I'm, I'm wearing the boots, though, man. I'm wearing the boots. I'm wearing the boots at this point. Okay, I wasn't I sure on. Walking <laughs> out of here with this stuff. Then, then I, then scrap that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, re rewind that then, and uh, Jax is gonna use the knife to intimidate the dude and be like, "No, this is our stuff now." <laughs> okay. As you kind of, as the figure comes closer, you can see it is a young woman. Uh, she is only about in maybe mid twenties or so, probably just an over eager slagger that got a little bit too deep and now is having a hard time coming out of the rabbit hole. And you see your kind of approach. And as you kind of, uh, hold up the knife to intimidate, you see, uh, jangling from her belt, uh, assorted tools. You see, a, uh, particularly a hacksaw. Um, a knife of some kind, um, what appears to be an old pizza cutter, uh, all of them stained with uh, some terrible gore, um, and she's you know somewhat relaxed. But at the so at the sign of the knife, uh, she begins to become quite agitated indeed. No, I worked hard for these things, so hard. I worked day and night. I toiled. Those are my. Those are. And she points over at Figrin and says, "Those are my boots." I I found those boots. Those are mine. Hey, these boots and are she's... 13E. I'm a 13E. I'll leave you mine. They were a tight 12. <laughs> Your feet aren't as big as mine. You can have these. It'd be a better fit. No problem. Okay, Fun so you deal. have some old Fair you trade. have some old boots that you're leaving? <laughs> okay. So I need you to go ahead and make that uh intimidation roll for me there, Drew. Go ahead and give me a charisma roll. It's easy with the bone knife. Sorry, I was trying to see if I can do a camera and it doesn't work. So, crazy wall, easy with bone knife. So, I have a oh, 13, yes. which is easy. So, it works. Okay. Nice. She, um, she, she just kind of, you know, does kind of step back and step away, and she's like, oh, I. It's you're all the same. Everyone I've met's the same. They always want my things. They always want them, and they always take them. If I just, I just want, some, just need some friends. Some, just need some friends. And she's just kind of like downcast. And <laughs> she actually just kind of, um, not really, it, like you know, dim. You kind of end up having a step to the side because without any sort of aggression at all, she just kind of comes and, no, and curls up. I'm not um, moving. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. No. Okay. She can move. So what? So what this looks like then is, if you don't move aside, she actually just kind of curls up in a little bit of the field position, and she leans up against your leg as she's just like, just like, and very distraught. And since you don't move, lean, lean. She does as she kind of leans up against. She, she is uh, not showing terrible aggression, and it has backed down as she's like really not gonna try to stop anything that you're doing but she just asked for some friends and she's sad to lose her things walk away dude <laughs> kick her away <laughs> yeah oh yeah i don't want her okay. on me okay let's come back to Jax. Jax, what do you do as you kind of see this play out that, that'll bring us back to your guys's turns <laughs> so i'm glad that she, we didn't like attack her but i'm i'm am concerned can i consult ruth's notebook and perhaps find a cache nearby a cache mm -hmm. like a, mm. a potential yeah. lead yeah um certainly you can so go ahead and give me an intelligence roll um it, it, that would that would be quite a prize indeed so you're not finding it it would be it's you you, if you continue to work through, it's going to be easier. So, uh, you know, obviously, as any action is, it'll be easy next turn. But also, you're kind of getting familiarity with the book still. And kind of learning, you know, to read Ruth's shorthand and kind of how she references other parts of the notes. And, you know, some notes fall out in the ground. You have to tuck them back in. So you're not able to get that information yet. But you, you sense it's right on the tip of your tongue. Okay. Anything else? Just, yeah, let me hold on. Let me let me just look here. You might I might have an, uh, an idea of where you might be able to find some more stuff that people hopefully won't take from you. Things? Yes, I I do. I like things. Thank you, thank you. I I would be so excited to have some more things. I I work so hard for the things I have. So hard. That brings us to Figrin. 
He said, well, the things that you described as your needs, your wants, and the things that frustrate you, these are all part of the human condition. <coughs> so don't worry about it. We'll be your friends. It's fine. But these are my boots. Okay, you understand that. Friends, friends don't friends don't steal things from you. No, they don't we don't steal things. things but it works better for them than you. And the same thing for me. I'll find something that I can't wear. A nice cocktail dress is yours. <laughs> All of a sudden, she gets really aggressive, and she's like, "I put those boots over my boots. Those are my boots. I need both of those boots. You can't take them, and you're not my friend." And then she immediately like shrugs. You don't want to be friends. You know, <laughs> that makes me friends sad. don't. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to rethink it though, because I still like you. You got a lot of chutzpa. Friends don't steal. Friends don't steal. And she just kind of like rocks yeah. back and forth. How about, like I, how about I borrow them and if I come back dead, you can have them off my cold dead feet. I already took them off cold dead feet. Don't want to do that again. It was too much but work. You're used to it. You're actually an expert. So just <laughs> stick close to me. I'm your friend. She, she kind of side-eyes you. As long as you're wearing those boots, she's not going to be totally convinced. But she's warming up a little bit. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll have to prove myself to you, but I will. I will. Okay. Yeah. Brings us to Fang. What do you do, Fang? So, what is the what is her disposition <laughs> at this exact moment? Oscillating between anger and being a small, frightened little child. Okay. So, Fang is going to figure out what piece of furniture she uses as her bed and take her over yep. to it. It's right over here. Yep. Okay, lay her down, uh, and I, then he's going to look at the gruesome work that Jax had, had started looking into. Okay, so he, he, you're just going to lead her over and kind of like just guide her, try to get her to stay calm and put her on that yeah. end of the room? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, it is going to take a little bit of convincing here. She's kind of acquiescing, but like to pick her up and move her. I'm gonna say it's an easy charisma just to kind of coax oh. her along. Um, you know, you're not you guys aren't making things too difficult for her, but you are wearing her boots. So Yeah. So easy charisma? Easy charisma, yeah. Good. There you go. Nice. Okay. So she kind of sits on she you know, it's like this mix of metal <laughs> and wood that she's kind of scraped together to be a bed for herself and she kinda of is sitting on there and, and every time she rocks back and forth there's a little bit of a creak but as she reaches out to kind of like hold and take your hand and is your hand that like takes away thing, uh, you see it stained terribly red and you see that like her arms up to her forearms are just stained with this gunk red that you know is you know to be human blood. I need you to go ahead and make a, a uh, charisma roll to kind of just like resist like that moment of like shock as your hand gets pulled away. Excellent. Okay. So Fang has done that. As you kind of look into her handiwork, um, you would have to like open up the bag. The bag is kind of like tied shut, um, but there is blood around it. And it you, without opening the bag, I mean, do you open the bag or what do you do? I think Fang opens the bag. Okay. So as you open the bag. <laughs> Um, yeah, I need you to go ahead. It's You don't have much adrenaline at this point, but go ahead and make a madness check for me as you yeah. see assorted human limbs that have been... Ooh. Yes, sir. Fang begins to lose his cool, and you take an additional D4 adrenaline. Uh, yeah. Just one more adrenaline that pops up, but you're losing your cool. I need you to make a D20 roll, and we're going to see moment. what the result of that is. Actually, no, I'm not Ooh, that's good. It is good. One second. I actually left my little book in the other room. This was feeling like the end of seven for a second no there. That's a 15, though. That's a double your, double effort. your effort. For one that's roll. Good or... that's, that's good madness. Yeah, probably one yeah. one one effort. In, Just you know. once. Yeah, if your attempt is successful. Okay. So you guys already got there with what the result was. Uh, with the uh, 15, you double your effort with the next successful attempt. So whatever yeah. your next successful action is, even if it's not the next round, it just doubles. Okay, so you're kind of you're kind of like like a little bit of a caffeine buzz, like kind of like like your adrenaline starting to move a little bit more through the body, and whatever you do, you got a little bit more oomph behind it. Is and as you look into that, <laughs> what's that? 
Will that be dice and bonus? Oh, it's double your effort. Yeah. So oh, whatever you succeed, whatever you succeed in next. So it doesn't like go away if you don't succeed. Know, whatever you succeed in, it doubles. I'm trying to figure out if it's roll dice twice and then add, or if it's roll double. Right. It would be okay. rolling an additional, we'll say it is rolling an additional dice. Okay, cool. And, okay. Yes, so for weapon effort, 2d6. Yeah. Yep. So Fang is the kind of person that like gets like like super jolly or whatever watching serial killer dramas. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, as I've established, he's James Bond is, is kind of the goal for him. This okay. is my jam. As you look into the bag, um, she creaks back and forth and she's like, I just... Uh, they they wouldn't be my friends. They took my things. I didn't like it. it I just but I, I <coughs> it, it just it was it was too much. And I you see I'm I'm trying to fix things. I'm trying to make things better. I I just I don't have all the tools. I don't have what I need. And I keep trying, and it doesn't make things better. And she's just kind of like muttering on and on, and and kind of eyes glazed over. So she obviously has at least chopped up at least one person if not more, and you're seeing her handiwork there. Okay. So, that brings us to Dim. What was you it can, in the bag? You can tell what's in uh, uh, Assorted human limbs. Hands, okay. feet, uh, okay. eyeballs, different different parts of humans. Yeah. I never heard Tinker. that, because we jumped to the, the madness part, so... She's tinkering with people. Gotcha. It's handiwork for. She's reason. trying to make things. Better. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my left handiwork, and this is my right handiwork. No. With all due respect, JD, <laughs> what is this NPC? Honestly, like what <laughs> in the world? The next um, of friends. CSI. Yeah, like this is straight up Annie Wilkes, but like dialed up to eleven. Hey, Dim. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't like my dudes all being in this room. I kind of wanted to like get <laughs> out of here, but I'm gonna go like Hulk over her. Uh, wrap it up, dudes. We gotta go. I think we should leave this nice lady to her <laughs> art. Whatever. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but. Are we good? Let's go. Yeah, I imagine as soon as Fang sees the, the limbs, he's like, all right, that's it. <laughs> okay. And again, you're all breathing a little bit heavier. Your hearts are beating a little bit faster. You can't help it just a little bit. So therefore, even though the travel took the time it did, this interactions, you know, you know you're breathing mm -hmm. and using the filter on your mask that much harder. And she's like, I just wanted to make things better, and friends don't steal, and I just, I can't get, I don't have the right tools, and she just, like, is just stuck and just, it, it, stuck in defeat of, like, she's, she's aware enough she's not going to overpower the four of you. Um, yeah, but she's good. frustrated. We're going to Frustrated at losing her things. So you all, do you all leave? Yes. Okay. Yeah, My okay. parting Friends words go. are, it's like, look, Missy, here's the thing friends old friends favorite so i'm gonna give you a piece of advice advice is you don't stab your friends you don't cut up your friends you learn to accept your friends they're idiosyncrasies they have problems but, <laughs> but they're there or something. so you know but don't come stabbing don't stab dim don't stab mr fang don't definitely do not stab Jax. So that's not happening we'll be there for you when the time comes if you act right that's what friends do for each other it's conditional so we'll do it for you. So as you walk out in her boots, the the squeak of your of your soles as you're saying this last parting words and you're walking away, there's there's audible like of these nice boots as you're walking away. It's even a little bit slick with the blood that of her handiwork. And as she kind of looks up and uh, she sees as you're leaving, she kind of looks at all of you all at once and it's, it's hard to say even how she does it and she's like you're right when the time's right you will be there for me and i'll get my boots back 
and she sits there smiling like a little kid, just kind of rocking back and forth, like doing nothing but just waiting and just. I don't like, like... it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just want to chop her head off and. Uh, I'm, I'm, her I'm, face I'm starting to get murder hoboy with you, but. <laughs> I'm trying like to, it. to, you know. You know, there was one of them. You guys like to keep it light. You like to keep it heroic. I don't want to just like... kill everybody we see, but like, <laughs> she's setting off some alarm bells. I, I was trying to, I was trying to forge a piece here, but it's like working with the snow arcs. It's not. Cool. It's not. He took her boots. <laughs> he took her stuff. <laughs> they didn't fit. Also, you know, maybe it's just yeah, me, but she had a clear purpose for them. I think it's real weird to wear boots over your boots. I don't know. I just think that's super weird. <laughs> she kind of seems a little bit like ashamed, like a little kid would be, as she kind of like, oh, I'm, I didn't know. I didn't know. You know. And you guys, you guys make your way out. I need you all yeah. to make a charisma roll. As we that last roll. little line she delivers kind of sends a chill up your spines. We gotta get out if of you here. fail the charisma roll, oh. you get an, you get an adrenaline. Three. Failed it. We all failed yeah, it. I didn't. Oh, anybody, anybody gotta, you, you, you passed it, Fang, right? Yeah. He knew what he was dealing with. Three thirteen. <laughs> wild. I only missed it by one, man. <laughs> or two, actually. Okay. All right. I missed it by ten. Okay. Super charisma. Making your way through the tunnel, you leave. Uh, you leave the uh, disturbed uh, slagger in in her lair. Um, as you kind of work your way, work your way down, and once again you come to a crossroads. And Jax, it's it's your time. You've used a good bit of travel already and some time on those on the gas masks. So this is this is the next uh, the next intelligence roll. And oh yes, yes. sir, nice. nice. Yes, <laughs> sir. The man, That's, the man. Jax has been studying up along yeah you've you've seen jacks like, reading as he's walking and like somehow still like you know missing the the cracks in the in the walkway and definitely moving his way and you've even he's procured a highlighter and you you're not even sure exactly how he got the highlighter but he's been highlighting and like holding the cap in his mouth and like you know being like you know here's the here's the most important bits and mapping things out and you see him just like you know it's a beautiful mind as he kind of like maps it out he's like no so i weird. see so i see pen. the way I never even seen one of those before. Okay. So with that, um, what you gain with that is, um, you have the you you can see what's coming. You find these scratched out notes, and you can piece together the pieces, and you can actually only face one of the things that's yet to come. Now, your choices are. Uh, you see that there's actually Rutha has made some a, a quick jotted note that just said you know like no go and you've pieced it together through your brilliance that she has found what would be the direct path has now collapsed and you would come to a dead end and you would have to put intelligence effort toward the task. The other option and the other route that you can go is to face uh, face something and she made. Uh, made it very clear to be very quiet and very quick and to not linger too long on a particular stretch and uh, some sort of threat in the water in particular that she refers to but she doesn't have any particular notes she got it from other slaggers that had ran into trouble there and so she just has like you know quiet quick watch the water so these are kind of your options is circuitous routes that's going to take some time to navigate or something in the water. Man, I mean, going down the no-go where it's collapsed, the amount of effort it would to clear it in the in the tunnels in the dark would probably use up a lot of our reserves. Yeah. But the dangerous path of something in the water is obviously dangerous. We're going to see it coming. So yeah. you've gained a you've gained a great advantage to be able to bypass this well, but it, it, it it's still upon your road all the same. <clears throat> um, can you are... can you not swim, Jax? Is that what's the problem? Can no, I've never been in a near enough a large enough body of water to risk it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. There, I, I, there's 
There's no lakes in Alpha Sector. Oh yeah, I guess. There's water in- This is what you would- this is the path of watching the water. There is a walkway. You don't have to travel through the water. There's a walkway across, but basically there's notes to be careful about the deeper waters of this drainage uh, area here. I want to do something in the water, personally. Yeah, that's where I'm leaning. I don't I don't want to risk a cave-in. Yeah. Expending no. our resources. Doing manual labor. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a group of fighters here. Let's go... Let's go face the monsters. All right, cool. Okay, so we're cool. Should be one, two. Okay, it's three bananas in length. This walkway. So three. So it's triple far. So three okay. dashes oh, or six near moves. Three dashes across. Mm -hmm. And you all begin to work your way across. And Jax is in <coughs> particular. So you also find a, a shortcut through a maintenance, um, like maintenance access, and like there's a, even jotted notes of like, try this combination, and you're able to like work the lock, and it gets you directly to this path, and it does not take any additional uh, rounds off of your gas masks, off of your uh, atmosphere no. protection. It's all connected. And it's all connected. <clears throat> As you as you start working your way through these tunnels and you start working your way like Jax is very like you particularly be like you know okay like you need to be careful and you need to move quiet. So what that means is on this rickety metal walkway, everyone making successful stealth checks with Dex. And um, at this point, no alarm has been raised. You you're aware that you should be watching the water. Is this easy? That for brings us new boots? to Jax. It is easy for Figrin with the boots. It's correct. And if you find uh, other ways to negotiate this as well, I always want to give options for creativity. So if you find a way to, you know, soften your approach, by all means. But straight up, you know, just using your dexterity, just a straight up dex roll. That's a 19 for me. Okay. Oh, man, they're still squeaking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not a great yeah, well, Jax, <laughs> I'm reading my book Jax. and like I just move along. <laughs> Jax, you know, he, he knows the name of the game, but he, he uh where the muscle was helpful in the last adventure, <laughs> the muscle yeah. is less helpful now is like, you know, you're no. the guns are clanking against the metal armor and there's like a junk shield and like the, the blood slick boots are squeaking on the walkway. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if we'll just allow a moment of dark humor here where it's just like Jax like moves ahead and it's like quiet and it's just like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so everybody's kind of rattling behind. Excuse you. you this see... junk shield is a marvel of modern engineering. <laughs> <laughs> you see um, ripples. Um, you see ripples emanating from the water where something is alerted to your approach. It is going to arrive in one round as you see the, the ripples moving closely. Um, so do all of you sprint as in using your movement? Because you, you've lost the chance for total surprise here, but you can get ahead of whatever it is. Uh, Fang is going to kind of spend his turn aiming uh, his knife, his, his bone knife throw. Just okay. Pinpointing. Oh, man. Yeah. It's about triple far if something comes in on the edge of the map. Oh, so I just need right. To be aware yeah. of that as well. It's going to be. It's gonna be <laughs> difficult. So I guess I'll. I guess I will get to where Jax is then. Yeah. I, I was thinking of it differently. I felt safer by myself. <laughs> is the water murky, or can I see from up here what this thing is? It's very murky. You okay. can't see what it is. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep up with the group. Okay. By sprinting. Okay. Kind of making your way one one length down as you're kind of moving along. The the you know the whole metal walkway, maintenance walkway is kind of jostling and you know the creaks and groans of not seeing use for a while. Mm -hmm. Everybody's breathing a little bit harder. The gas mask stick down by one. And um, I'm trying to think. I so if if it's coming in around, you fail the dex checks. You all get to move. So it's back to me. So then it's here. Okay. Right. Yeah. Does that sound fair to everybody? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I just, I didn't want to be like, it's coming in around, and now it's here. <laughs> you see this uh, thing uh, kind of rise up out of the water. You see, like, kind of what used to be a deer head with bones kind of coming up, but underneath it, you see a, a jaw and mouth that has appeared out of this black, inky uh, goo. And it's a claws kind of rise up. It's, you know, it's got these pustule kind of glowing green uh, banks across it. It's growing fungus and mold and nastiness from living down in the muck and in the waste. And it swims like a crocodile quickly through the water. Opens up its gaping jaw. And <coughs> a thick toad-like tongue slaps out toward one of you. I'm just going to go from left to right on a D4. So a four is Jax. Jax, um, right. you can left choose. Right. Oh, What's that? Right. sorry. I was thinking in, initi in initiative order, not physically. <laughs> gotcha. Now this big tongue kind of whips out and like, you know, starts you know going across Jax's body. It's got uh, kind of like a cat tongue does, where it's almost like barbed and it kind of you know rips something away. Now. Each of you right now can take a moment. You can choose one item that is not going to be destroyed by the world, by the waste. And that will be a protected item. And you can just star it, highlight it, whatever you want to do. And that item is not cannot be destroyed. But any other item is up for grabs. And then once you choose what that item is to save, Jax, I need you to roll a D10 to see what else is taken from you. Oh, I'm not I'm not rolling I'm I'm personally not gonna star anything. Like this is because I don't have a lot, okay. and, it, and it would affect things. All right, okay. anyways. So, D10. Yes, sir. Four. Let's see. Does that include... Am I including my starter loot? Like, my code, my personal codex? Because I'm totally fine if I yes. am. I just want to... Yeah, okay. Yes. My Zippo lighter is gone. Your Zippo lighter is ripped out from a pocket. The whole pocket is ripped away along with the lighter. Is it the smell of the fuel is attractive in some sense. And you see that big tongue kind of whip back into it and disappear into the jaw. And it kind of settles back down into the water. And you know that this tongue will lash out again. And it comes back to you guys. Jax, you're up first. What do you do? Um, run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just gonna full dash my Get turn. Right down. Okay. Full dash. Big grin. I'm going to withhold my action. Okay. Thanks. Drew. That is you a know. knife. That's a throw from the knife. Okay. So oh, hard. Now. It's hard. Hope you don't lose you your knife again. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you're throwing it... Oh, uh, sorry. Let me make something really clear before you make this choice. Yes. Um, <coughs> because sometimes my descriptions, I don't I don't get them all out there. So, yeah. as you're kind of seeing what's happening, this water is below you. So, you're oh. it's, down a, it's down a slope, and this thing is beneath you. And so, these kind of, like, ramps of drainage tunnels, like, the water is kind of rushing into the river there. I realize... Sorry, I had all this in my head. It happens as a GM sometimes. Have it on your head, and you're like, everybody's seen this, right? So there. these brick, these brick slopes are kind of going down. The drainage tunnels are are sending out. They and these aren't sewers with like human waste or anything. These are just like storm drains that are running. So there's a constant flow of this water, but it's pretty pretty heavy water that's flowing through, and this thing is swimming against. So if you were to end up down there, you would be in for quite the swim. And also, it is a little bit of a drop, but it's not like a you could you could dive up from the top. There you go. Perfect. So you could dive up from the top oh. into the water, but it's a slope to get back up. There is one access ladder, kind of a safety ladder there in the middle where you could like kind of climb back up. But all to say, if you throw that knife and it gets stuck in the creature doing the damage, it's it's difficult to retrieve. But it'd okay. be awesome. I'm willing to retrieve it. That would be awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am willing to retrieve it, so it is hard because it's a bone knife and not a th throwing knife. So, that's the problem. Um, but we're gonna just try it. Alright. That's 13. 
So that's not going to hit. What do we think about burning a grid here? We, we haven't messed up yet. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth yeah. it. We're running past this That's thing. That's true. I just don't... I just... Yeah. I guess I've lost my knife. <laughs> Go after it. I'm just kidding. Nice. Don't... D Jax is not, like, encouraging any of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I want to burn the grit, because then I can <laughs> safely get it. <laughs> so... Uh, 12... Well, everybody gets one. Yeah. So I rolled 12. Yeah, I mean... I so, did I roll 12 on the die? I, I already can't remember. Yeah, you rolled a, you rolled a 12. Okay, so 12 on the die, 13. So I have to just roll a 2. I have 2 adrenaline. So I'm going to burn a grit to hit. No, wait, no. Yeah. 2, one, yeah. 3 plus 5. So that's 17, so it doesn't hit anyway. Yeah. Yep, that's that's me wasting mine. <laughs> that's right, Drew. That was your that was a choice you can make. Yep, a close shot. Cool. And the creature you you it stabs into some of the bone shell that's grown on top of the creature where it's lodged in there, but it didn't cause any harm. So you see it kind of like sitting there, kind of like, you know, wiggling back and forth like metal does cool. when it gets stuck in wood or something. You know, kind cool. of wiggling and just haunting you. Taunting you as its bone has lodged in the bone. <laughs> All right. You do you take it, and then you continue to move down the walkway, dive in. What do you do? <coughs> hmm. I don't know. I, I invested a lot in that knife. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm going to roll... Yeah. I'm gonna roll a, a, a skull die. If it's a skull, I go in. Yep. So I dive in. All right. From there, diving in, you're able to get in the water, kind of right on top of the creature, and uh, the thing is is sitting in front of you, and cool. uh, quite shocked at your actions as well. He doesn't usually get this from the things it preys upon. Cool. Brings us to dim or Figrin's waiting. No, it's, it's waiting. still dim. Still dim. Okay, go ahead. Dim. Question. I just don't want to skip anybody. <laughs> Clarify something right. for me, please. Yep. Uh, because I'm used to playing Five E and mm -hmm. action economy, it kind of all happens at once. Um, yep. Is this all quick enough that Dim could bring her axe down and make like a hard roll or something to try to chop its tongue off? Oh yes. So, okay. What that what that would look like in uh, with I have never played Five E, mm -hmm. but the way that I see RPG works is if you have a badass idea, you get to do it. Okay. So <laughs> there you go. Right, cool. economy, I mean, be damned. I want to try to chop its tongue off. <laughs> so what that's gonna look like is I think what I need you to do is to taunt it. And when it and like when it Great. comes and it attacks you, because it, it, the tongue is in its mouth right now, so you would need to get that tongue okay. out. Okay. So okay. I think you can taunt it where you for sure are going to get attacked from it. If you okay. fail, it's going to steal something from you. But that's if fine. you succeed, you will you'll hit the tongue, which yep, I think that's will fine. be badass. So you're kind of like, come on, come on. Yeah. All right. Gonna, so I'll move my normal. I want to get. Oh, I want to give Figrin some space for whatever wacky thing he's about to do. <laughs> so I, I won't get as far as Jax because I'm not dashing. Okay. I want to save my action. And boy, I don't know how this is going to work with Fang, like, leaping down on top of it. Uh, I was just going to yell at it. Uh, Survive. I'll be fine. Uh, I'll just go... Hey, stupid, do I look tasty or what? <laughs> and then that's it. Okay. The thing, like, looks up at you and you kind of making yourself a bigger target. It's so, like you kind of see it Trying. lick its lips a little bit. Like, oh, yes. Okay, good. It's the next meal. You have its attention. Great. I imagine this is a little bit like them sitting like almost like a baseball player. Yeah. Like waiting yeah. for the pitch. I'm super ready. <laughs> All right, that brings us back to Figrin, that everyone's wondering uh, just what's on his mind. Jax, where he is located, Figrin uh, decides that mobility is key here, so he's going to do full dash 
up to yep. I'm sorry, with Fang where he is located. He uh Figrin's gonna do a full dash up to Jackson yeah. as he is, he just calls down to him. He's like, Boy, don't you have like some paracord in that go bag? You should consider putting a dummy cord on that knife. <laughs> that is a great idea. <laughs> He's sitting there in the water just like <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> If I do that, so yes. I will. I will catch up to Jax and uh, guard the point. But I'm still watching okay. to make sure nothing bad happens to the rest of these guys. The target has been selected. The target has uh, baited the creature, and the tongue lashes out. Yeah. It all slows down in slow motion here with this axe. Do you hit or do you not? I need a strength roll in the gloom of this uh, tunnel. I think that's it. I think 15. you got it. That's a fair yes. Thing. Nice. nice. Ah. Perfect. Nicely done. <coughs> the tongue <Got> gushes <laughs> blood as it kind of like just <laughs> oozes on top of you, but it's the rest of the tongue slaps down on the platform next to you, and the thing howls in terrible pain, and it begins to submerge itself. But like I, this is not worth it. Like whatever that whatever that thing is, just bit. I don't want anything to do with this. It's, it's an animal after all. And it begins to kind of submerge itself. And it's going to leave and around. And you see the you see the back of it still still above the water. And uh, your knife begins to submerge, but not quite yet. That brings us back to you guys. What do you do? Jack is going to continue running. Mm -hmm. This is his way. Good call. Yep. <laughs> Hold action to the end of the turn again, please. Okay. All right. Bang, this is your chance to get your knife back. Can I grab the knife and cut it out of some, cut it through the beast? Is uh, that something? would you can just snag the thing actually okay. hitting it in the water. Uh, okay. I think it would be like probably like a hard strength or something. It's 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 you're down in like the currents at this point, so. You're, you're in his you can backyard, snag it back man. if you desire. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna <laughs> keep the knife and go. Climb back up. I have a feeling we'll need this again, so I'm gonna save it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It's handy to have. I feel like we all have a special okay. attack, and Fangs is throwing the bone knife, and Jax is running. <laughs> special attack. He bought you guys. He bought you. He, he just saved you guys probably about three pieces of loot um, mm -hmm. with with that nat twenty. Because okay. if this thing had if they had caught you unawares and you had failed that roll, that it would have just started like it just would have started happening. Yeah. <laughs> you would have had a chance to get yeah. like a third way down. <laughs> well, that was awesome. To be fair, that's so, not shade I'm throwing. We told oh, Jax to run in the first yeah. one. Okay, good. Yeah. I just I didn't want you to think I was like Jax is what running. Shade? Right. That is Jax's job. No, it's all good. <laughs> we protect the Jax. The, the smart one <laughs> has to survive. That's how it goes. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't read that as shade either. I was just okay, like, good. yeah, that was that, just was, a big, that was a big roll. Just clarifying. That's all right. All right, Jax has moved down. Figrin's hold, holding again or moving? Correct. Correct. Okay. And then Drew uh, Feng is climbing back up the ladder, sopping wet, and you know, kind of sheathing his knife again, and kind of taking his action to move back up. And uh, Dim, you see the still twitching segment of tongue flopping around on the platform next to you, and the creature is submerging. What do you do? Uh, just like, if I could, like team building flavor, I kind of want to just like throw an arm over and grab Feng, like, like warrior clasp as he's coming up the ladder and just kind of haul him the rest of the way up nice. and then i will however far i can i think that's a banana the creature and, uh, okay i will cruise up to jack creature submerges into the water thing coming behind ringing out the uh the water of his nice jacket <laughs> And you guys kind of move, nice. move on to the next. Good work, next, everybody. Next moment. Nice, nice hit with the with the axe. I so just barely got lucky. Yeah, as we travel, uh, Fang goes. Thank, good idea, Charles, and ties rope 
with his knife, using his pack rat for the session. Okay, that sounds awesome. Okay, Who's so Charles? You, you have Figrin. <laughs> Yeah, that was in character. I know who Charles is. Dim does not know who Charles is. What? <laughs> okay. I don't know Charles. <laughs> so you continue to work your way down the tunnels. Following the notes, um... Jax has carved you all a excellent path. And you see Rutha's notes specifically note a, a where she uh, entered the tunnels after leaving the apartment. So you know this was kind of one of the best access points <coughs> to get to the apartment. And uh, she noted that and told you as you had kind of conferred that she covered up this uh, the secret passageway at like on her way out so the rangers wouldn't follow and that and that passageway should still exist and she said that she actually worked her way through uh what was a cave and then connected back into the tunnels and she's marked exactly kind of how to get there now you had to work your way around several different obstacles to get to this point but you find yourself where she noted to go now it, no but things changed since Rutha had been been there. I just want to give a little bit of meta information where Rutha wasn't leading you into anything, and, and you have no expectation that she would be doing that at all. But you notice that um, the entrance that she marked is basically where this uh, where this was supposed to go. Uh, you you see that there's been activity out the, outside of that tunnel, and uh, where this tunnel leads into, you see a faint green glow coming from the cave inside and you see inside you know that that's where to go you see no activity no people <laughs> at all and um you see a faint green glow into the tunnel entrance hold everything over I'm sure that's fine. It's fine. It's just, it's fine. just light. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? I mean... Nope. Oh, you're that. <laughs> I thought a war. I didn't even see it. Okay, so another another round is passed of travel, and you come into the entrance of this cave. And as you see, people have actually you see that people have like laid down these metal walkways across this water that's kind of worked its way into the cave. Um, you can see to your right uh, that there are um, there is a kind of uh, shallow water that's kind of rushing in and kind of going to this other small cave, kind of narrow entrance. But coming out of that cave, you actually see like <clears throat> rather thick smoke and fumes and steam kind of coming out. And that's over to your right. Uh, ahead of you, you see the walkway leading over and it, the faint green glow that you see is you can actually see green pooled liquid. And Figrin would recognize this immediately as the handiwork of the chemist. Of the and chemist. you see that there is a pool of acid laying directly in front of you. And you see that, again, walkways have been constructed across it, but you also hear the whir and uh, the whir of machinery. And <coughs> you can only assume that these uh, noxious clouds over to your right are fumes from the machinery that seem contained in that, in that cave to your right and the walkways in front of you. Again, you don't see anybody. There's no guards. There's no, it, like, there's no movement that you can see and then there's kind of a green almost steam coming up from the the acid pool where it's difficult to see farther without moving farther it kind of obscures your vision in a hazy way farther into the cave so um 
I would say I will say I will let you guys choose your initiative at this point. If there's an order that you find most helpful, you would be able to tactically decide that as a group. Do you want to mix things up or keep things as they are? I'm good with uh, keeping it the same way, but I was gonna say we definitely have I think Jax is is to our benefit to be the point man. Um That's fine. I the reason I've been holding is because I feel like I am acting in support in case something goes wrong and have a lot of yeah. tricks and tools for the, the... Yeah, so why would we... I'll happily I'll happily move to the rear if that's fine. Contingency man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So All we, right, we, Jax. we want to put the if we can either do that or the, other, the only other thing is I would put dim up closer to Jax. I, I wanna, yeah, I want to stick pretty tight to Jax. So wherever he is, I'll be. To put, to switch, yeah, that works for me. All right, right on. All right, good job. Well, okay, Jax. You hear the word machinery? The pool of pool of acid in front of you that's contained. It's not spilling over to where you are. You're just looking at water at your feet. What do you do? Well, the machinery is definitely piquing Jax's curiosity. The fact that they've got working, you know stuff going on underground that's outside of the purview of my notes is information that I'd really like to have. So Jax is going to move down and creep into the machinery room. Hey, as you do creep down and, and move in there, uh, the fumes are, are quite <coughs> potent. And if you choose to continue forward, you realize that it would be burning your lungs. And, uh, but you are wearing gas masks. So the idea would be if you continue use the gas mask, it's going to burn up quicker, uh, for the whole kind of whole crew. If you spend time in that room. So do you proceed? Uh, just initially. Yes. Just, just enough to okay. understand what it is. And then kind of look inside. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I'm just going to delete this guy. Uh, you would not be able to see this little lab desk. So you as a player kind of withhold that from your character's mind. And as you kind of move in, I'm going to tick one away from your gas mask here as the fumes are, are choking up your filter. And you see uh, these uh, vent stacks that are fashioned to actually go up through the ceiling to the upper, to, <laughs> you know, the, the grounds above and are, you know, pumping out these kind of noxious fumes from the machines, but the, the seals are not complete, and so they're kind of like also filling the room where you are without it spilling out to the entire area. Um, so you kind of see those machines uh, just doing their job. You see vent piping kind of haphazardly uh, connected uh, into these vents, and you can trace that that pipe is going through another tunnel into the next area. Interesting. You were, I think you were muted there for a second, so. Yeah, just, in, like just interesting. Um, okay. Could I roll intelligence, could I roll scholar and just see if I have, like, anything else on this that would be, like, beneficial to the group? Okay. So, I'm just going to give just a frame of reference. Far, like a, like a dash is going to get you about yay far. This is a pretty big space. Okay. So for you kind of moving into that tunnel, anything within that far, you could still do an action, but you kind of, you know, you'll be able to move across this room and take an action, but if you move into the next room, like, that's a dash. Okay. If you're moving all the way up to the door that you guys are seeing just on the edge of your vision, that would be, um, that would be a dash for sure. You know, that's like kind of moving pushing far. So I kind of wanted to give a little bit of a gauge of distance of the kind of space that you're seeing, okay. um, as it is fairly large, but I don't want your tokens to be so tiny that, you know, yeah. it kind of goes off. Yeah. Okay, so you want to you wanna roll intelligence, and what information are you looking for? <clears throat> I'm just getting to see, like, how well this is put together. Like, I've heard of the chemist. Figurin's talked about him. Like, sure. is this on the verge of breaking, or is this like, yeah, it's not well put together, but it's 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 churning. So definitely what you can see is um, that this is, it's not that it's about to break, but it is newly fashioned. And it's not like a permanent installment. Even from the time that Rutha has left, this has been installed and made. 
So this looks a bit more like quickly put together and kind of newly formed than it does like it's going to fall apart from too much use. It just look, kind of looks like it's a DIY job to kind of get the job done and it's happened relatively quickly. Okay. Then that is a fail. So he will not even know what to kick if he needs to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I, I was going to say, with <laughs> you just kind of knowing the knowledge that you have, you'd be able to perceive that, and you would be able to kind of start picking your way through a machine. Maybe you'd be less effective with a fail, but you'd still be able to start start moving toward a task if you desire. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Jack's moved in there. What about you, Dim? I don't know what he's doing, so um, I'm going to go as far as I can until I realize it's starting to get choky. And there's no acid in here, so I, I can see him, right? Like, I don't I don't yeah. want to use up more. Like Sorry, go ahead. It would be kind of like a sauna, you know, like a, it's steamy, but you're still able to like I see clearly. See. Okay. And it would it would basically tick down if you want to follow him in there. It would it would tick down the gas mask timer additional, and then it would also tick down <laughs> on your round. So it's kind of like doubling the speed at which you're using those. I prefer not to if I can like stand at the edge of it and just watch him. Is that possible? Okay. Yeah, Just so you'd be able to kind of edge of the tunnel, and you'd be able to keep an eye on him, but you wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't be entering the room. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just want to know if he gets in trouble, and I need to go in there. Sure thing. So she, she, you kind of give like, hey, give me a heads up if you need something, kind of thing. Yes. And he kind of moves in. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. So I think what this looks like is kind of the ceiling gets a lot higher at, at where you're standing, so all the gases are kind of like piling up in the ceiling above you, but where he yeah. is, that ceiling's lower, so it's kind of like containing everything and it's a little Perfect. bit more a little bit more of a hazard okay that brings us to thing what do you do thing no, he dim has jacks covered so thing's gonna just kind of do reconnaissance in this room the the room he's already in with the uh green stuff right so you'd be able to move in here and you'd be able to see all of this. So as you look across, you see a large pool of acid. They've established walkways across it to move uh, to move across easily. You look to the left and you would see what appears to be kind of like, you know, a crew of some kind. So you <laughs> see some bedding. Uh, you see um, like lockers, kind of some medical equipment. And then you see where the acid is uh, pumping out of is this pipe that you can see here. And you see the green sludge of the acid filling up that pool is coming from that pipe there. And there appears to be kind of a work area. The machines that you're hearing uh, are the loudest over to your right. And you're kind of able to take all this in. The door to your left, you see, is kind of like a locked security door that's been installed, kind of a gate to kind of prevent easy access. Um, and so just like a metal thick door that's been placed across this tunnel uh, over to your right. It's kind of like rock face, door, more more rock face along the cave side there. Is there anything now, more I can do because it's so far away? <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably just you moving in. Now, one thing I do want to I do want to know is, as you kind of get to the steam of the acid, one phenomenon that you do notice clearly is the consistent smog and smoke that has been following you guys through the time that you've entered the room. It appears to be withheld and like burned away by the fumes of the acid, and you are under the inclination that if you were to remove your gas mask in here that you would not be affected by the smoke of the rune. You would kind of that... see almost like this invisible wall where the, the acid oh. fumes are pushing back the smoke. Would that mechanically mean that we don't uh, reduce gas mask stuff in the, ga in the ooze zone? That is okay. correct. Cool. Yep. Good to know. So, uh, Fang is going to let Dim and uh, Figrin know about that, and then F Dim can let Jax know. 
That's um, that's bad. That's, that's risky. I mean, it is risky. Well, my understanding is that these walkways are like pretty stable. No, no, no. I, you're good. You're totally fine. Oh. You're, you're. Okay. That's solid information. Yeah. <coughs> so that's my turn. Uh, I will, uh, try to scoot up here past Dim, follow Jax, and dash as far as I can get into this room with him, and, uh, see what I observe. So, you would, you would have seen what I was describing to Jax, the vent stacks kind of going up into the ceiling, the fumes pouring out, machinery powering those vent stacks kind of in the back corner, and you see some fuel that would be used for that machinery as well, uh, resting to the side of the machine there. So, you would be able to kind of take all that in and get into the room and see all that on that turn. And your gas mask okay. chokes up a little bit more and ticks down by one. Can I, uh... Uh, investigate, survey the area to see if I find anything that's useful, even if I can only see it and not access it this turn. Uh, all you would really be able to see of use at this point would be that kind of uh, fuel container. Uh, you don't see any sort of cargo or anything. This this area was kind of like cleared out because it you know it was going to be covered in fumes, so it doesn't really serve much utility beyond just kind of having these vent stacks that are going up to the ceiling at this point. You can clearly see that the piping for the vents is leading through a tunnel out to another area. That would be very clear to you. Okay. All right, my bad. I, uh... Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take down this for the whole group, just another one, as you guys are kind of in that room with the fumes still. And uh, one thing I will note is, Fang, you kind of get a little bit of a chill noticing that, like, whoever has been staying here at this spot, they've they've been living here, and people have been occupying this space. You see the bedding's been used, that the lockers are, like, halfway open, and you realize that even if anyone's not here at this moment, it's only a matter of time before they return. That's my turn. Back to you guys. Um, for Jax, he like he doesn't want to burn too much, but he would like to follow the pipes and his and see if. Okay. Sure thing. It does tick down as you spend another <coughs> round in the room, moving through the worst of it. But then you kind of come out the other side, and uh, you can see through this tunnel. And we'll just go ahead and remove all that. You kind of move through this tunnel into this area. You see a pool of water. Um, the last bit of water is you, it transitions into the acidic goo. And you see the piping that goes into this incredible, like, much larger machine. You see a console of interactive machine. You see this, like, big square vat that's bubbling with the concentrated goo. Uh, this machine's creating the acid and pumping it out to the pool to create it. And you notice the same phenomenon that's happening that Thing noticed, where the smog and the, even the fumes from the vent stacks of the machine are being burnt up and, like, kept at bay as soon as you kind of enter, like, the, the almost the humidity might be a good way to describe the humidity of the acid that's filling the cave. You look over to your right and you see a workstation. Uh, you see uh, vials, beakers, uh, small little um, chemist flames. Uh, and specifically, let me pull it up, but you see uh, I'm a little towel, uh, a little icon for it. But you see a small little journal, a notebook, uh, a leather notebook that's been laid out flat on the desk. Ooh, I like books. <laughs> <clears throat> this is it's not the uh it's not the book of the undead i just needed a uh icon to kind of fit it but you kind of see a, a, a rather impressive looking leather journal uh that's laying out with you know some pins and, and different notations and you can kind of see that from a distance and the machine to your left the workstation and, and kind of laboratory to your right 
And that's about as far as you can get on your turn. <clears throat> okay, Dim. There you go. Perfect. Dax! Oh, crap. He walked off. I'm gonna go... As far as I can get. I probably still can't see him, huh? Mm, you would be able to kind of... He would be out in front of you as you kind of... If you just okay. make your way along the edge of the cave and don't do anything else, I would say you yeah. kind of get... Oh, great. Perfect. Get on his heels. Love yep. it. Yep. That's exactly what I want to do. Takes another round of your gas mask if we're working through the, the fume room. Mm -hmm. um, but you're you're right in his heels still. Okay, great. But Dim, isn't this, this yeah. fascinating? Marutha doesn't have any of this in her books. Like, this must be new. Any what? She's, all of this. This is She didn't describe oh. any of this. And she was here, like, what, five days ago? So that means... That. that between Rutha leaving the apartment and now somebody has put all of this together. Put all of this together. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's super weird. It is. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to. There's a book on the table. I'm, I'm probably going to get it. Okay. You like books. That's good. Uh, yes. Great. <laughs> okay. That brings us to Fang, the lone explorer. If uh, Fang hears no screams, he's going to keep going into the, the, the ooze and stuff as far as he can go to see okay. wherever he can figure out so down the walkways and wherever you can put wherever you think is reasonable. So you would be able to get either to the little staff area, the employee quarters, if you will, or mm -hmm. you'd be able to get over to the bank of the machine. You get to the bank of one of those one of those places. Where do you go? Uh, the staff section. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You're able to see farther into the cave. Okay. Yeah. And you see that they've like they have some like different weaponry racks they've set up, kind of equipment lockers, different medical gear. And then you see over in the far corner, there are no walkways leading over to this machine. But you see over there these um, these large like canisters, different machinery hooked up, and you see um, like human human sized uh, containers that are. Um, that are resting kind of all surrounded by like this, this, this centrifugal machine. That's kind of like, you know, producing these different uh, like liquids. There's a whole series of like vials with various kind of vibrant colors. Um, and you kind of see this big like centrifugal machine over in the corner. Um, again, a console and different control switches interacting with that. But curiously enough, no walkway uh, to go over to that workstation. So, can I look through the staff stuff and get uh, more <coughs> gas mask stuff if they have extra? Okay. Um, yeah, so you would definitely be able to find a little bit more. You'd be able to find a spare filters. Uh, let's see how many they have. Go ahead and give me a D4 roll, and we'll add that many back onto your gas mask timer. Three. Cool. Three. Oh, nice. Right. Fantastic. Yep, so you're able to find, and you see if you spend some time looking, there's some other gear as well. Um, just going to take a little bit to kind of, you know, maybe break off a handle here, open a box there, kind of toss and turn things and, and see what you can find. But that's all you can get on this turn. All right, that brings us to Figrin. Kind of seen Dim moving past you, keeping uh, Jax uh, in your sights. Follow behind her, or squeeze through, catch up to Jax. And he has that book, correct? Nine. Not yet. He wasn't quite able to make it there okay. yet. He sees the book of interest. Uh, I am interested in the, the Bunsen burner that is working over there, and I want. To, I'm hopeful that I can uh, extinguish it, access its source, and use it for my blowtorch. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Let's uh, let's see if it's the right size. I'm going to roll up a d6, and if it's a 4 through 6, then it adds another use to your blowtorch. 
Oh, not quite. But you do have a fuel tank that is combustible and sitting, but it's not going to add to that blowtorch. So just add like small fuel tank, you know, Bunsen burner tank or whatever. So it's still of use to you, but it doesn't quite fit in the boat. Uh, got okay. it. Kind of rustling among the tools there. Okay. One. Now, all, as all of you have entered into this space, uh, your filters no longer have anything to filter, and the gas pass timer does not continue to tick down. And you notice that basically, like, it's actually the air has a strange sweetness to it, despite the, despite the caustic acid uh, that's filling the room. It's a, it's an odd sensation indeed. Timer ticks down by one, and uh, we come back to you guys. So I am assuming nothing else than Jax goes over and checks the book, right? Yep. The book is mine. Okay. <laughs> I will keep that knowledge safe, whatever it is, even if it's just how to make acid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just big, like, backwards E letters, you know? <laughs> just. <laughs> so, as you go to the book. Go ahead. I was gonna make a joke because uh, we were having Chris describe the chemist. Somehow the somehow the chemist wanted to make didn't think the sorry the chemist thought the waste was too kind. <laughs> somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, needed it needed a little less kindness. Yeah. Anyway, continue. I just wanted to finish that. Okay. So couldn't go. So. Jax, the most recent entry strikes your attention. And if I can uh, just note here, an exposition dump is coming. So here we go. You see the most recent entry uh, marks that there have been significant setback. And still, the work must continue. And you see different formulas, different notes that are put forward... And uh, basically saying, you know, people do not understand what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to save the waste. I'm not trying to destroy it. Don't they see what is possible that we could make a new paradise out of this place? It, I, I found a way to hold back the madness, to hold back the insanity, to burn it away with uh, glorious sin. And you see him kind of like reveling in this of like, I've found a solution, you know, like, and you realize that that's kind of the effect that this cave is having and probably why he's producing the acid here in the first place is to make almost this haven against the uh, breakneck smog that fills the rune otherwise. And uh, you, you see he continues, he says, uh, you know, new new inventions, the potential of, of what the smog holds is truly incredible. And results are quite promising. The howlers, in particular, handle the severity of alter of alteration the best. But I still need Luther's secrets. Now, if you remember, when you read Luther, Luther Van Wick was the signee of that of those notes and basically the keeper of the vault. I still need Luther's secrets. The Rangers can have all the rest. Guns. You can just tell that the staste in there is guns pitiful when one can attack the mind. Still, a true test of potential is needed. And that's where you come in, dear reader. Thank you for the valuable data. And with that, you hear a shudder go throughout the cave. And you have no idea how he's monitoring. Or what he's done. But you... A dust cloud slowly rolls in from where you have come. And the entrance is now sealed and collapsed. Over from the corner, there's a hiss as the central, centrifugal machine comes to a halt. And a few of the pods that it was spinning open. And you see rising out of it a, a rather uh, tall figure, not a giant, uh, but it, in terms of like, but we're talking like large NBA player of height, 
but their their body is gaunt and sunken and you see wiry muscles but on top you see it's very top heavy as this big apparatus of a helmet has been fashioned on its head and shoulders and you see metal cascading down its spine as well uh it, it looks similar to the other machinery that you've seen the chemist his handiwork is obviously at play a similar figure rises up here also large uh, wiry muscles, kind of gaunt figure. A huge helmet resting upon his head, a big apparatus as well. Different hoses connected in, you see like different pressure relief valves. Like, and uh, these figures walk into the acid and you hear the sizzling of the acid as they go forward. But as they as they step up onto the rocks on here, and you see that they're like a uniform and their clothing has been burned away, you see that their skin is miraculously healing itself back into place. Flesh is once again covering where the burns once were. One of them has a tank on its back and produces a flamethrower um, nozzle out from the front. That will be this figure here. The other figure, as as it goes through, is dragging, as it takes this long walk, is dragging this metal cable in his hand. Oh, it's going to be hard to move this thing around, isn't it? Let me get the middle. There we go. Oh, is dragging no. this metal cable behind it as he just kind of like drags this big, heavy, thick wire as it moves through and survives the acid. And these things move forward with... Uh, robotic intent, despite being organic uh, figures. Fang, you're taking this all in. They seem intent, and they uh, at stopping the <laughs> intruders there at the desk, almost as if they were commanded to do this very thing. And you all see these figures, and as they rise out of the acid and the flesh heals in, in its place, I need you all to make a hard charisma check. Can I if you see fail, them? You, uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of hand waving here where you okay. are around the edge and kind of everybody, sure. you're all like around as he reads this book and reads the entry and kind of reads aloud the last few words. Not and, worried. um, if anyone failed that roll, you take oh, four man. adrenaline. Oh Ooh. man. Because this is like, it's a un, like there is a su almost a supernatural event happening as these things are moving toward you. Monstrous even though they were once human. And that brings us to Jax. Jax, you have your full turn action. What do you do? Um, he's going to start panicking and start flipping through. Like He's, he's <laughs> offset. Like He's unsettled by the fact that it's referring to him as the reader and that he played into this. <laughs> um, but as soon as he sees it, he's like, okay, I'm going to flip through here and just make sure there's nothing else on these things. Um Okay. So I just want to spend a round studying, uh, to s and then for him, um, yeah, spend spend a round studying, and then all rolls against the enemy or object are easy. Okay. For everybody, or for you? For everybody. What? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wild. That's okay. crazy. All right. Is that a roll, or you just spend around doing it? I just it sacrifices around. Cool. Wow. Okay. So you spend around studying and my book. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I I just forget which is which because the scholar has something similar and I forgot which was which. So all good. That's dope. Okay. So cool. you scan through the journal and you realize that the chemist, uh, the author of this of this notes has redacted much of the information. Big, thick, black marker has marked out much of the most useful information because this was clearly put as bait to kind of, like, get you in. So, um, that being said, you are able to perceive that, you know, it, that um, these creatures are incredibly, incredibly resilient to physical harm. And he makes like, you know, excited notes of like big, you know, exclamation points like, you know, tests are incredible. Like these things heal like nothing I've ever seen. And, you know, they, they uh, like we're, we're still working on the, he says we're still working on the compliance systems. 
Now, everything you guys do against these things um, is a little bit easier for you. It's going to be easy as he's kind of, as Jax is feeding you information about what these creatures are. But you are all keyed into the fact that they are incredibly resilient to physical harm, which you saw with the acid as well. Would, just out of curiosity, would the easy apply to both creatures, or would it make sense to only apply to one of them? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's call it Subject A and Subject B, and I think with just the potency of the ability, uh, you are, you've been able to study, uh, Subject A, who's carrying the flamethrower tank on his back, and everything's easier against him, as you're, as you're seeing that he experimented with different compliance systems, okay. and so things are easier as you're getting information about Subject A first. Okay. Gonna eat my roll and nervousness. Okay. Dim, that brings us to you. What do you do? Great. Jax, what did you do? Um I I read a book. What else was I going to do? This is why <laughs> I say don't read. This is why. This is exactly why you do read. <laughs> um, alright, I'm gonna I got one job, right? So I'm gonna run for these guys. Uh, can I? Is it just like, is there stuff in my way, or can I get? Don't fall I don't know the what acid. the scale of this map is. Do not fall that acid. Yeah, right, right. You could get on the bank and kind of get ready for him, but they would be like double far away at this point. I mean, I line myself up for this guy's flamethrower. That would uh, also be a risk. You should protect Figrin at all costs. <laughs> Stay in the back. You're kind of on this island as they moved halfway toward you. Okay. I'm going to assume his flamethrower can't hit far. That's a terrible assumption. <laughs> They're also going to continue to move on their turn. I mean, that's good. I want to be in melee with them. <laughs> <laughs> After what happened yesterday morning, far, far uh, hit me a bunch until I died. Uh, all right. I'm going to... I guess I'll just I, I stand can't, here. I can't handle it twice, though. I can't yeah, I mean, it, it might. You never know. I'm going to stand here with my axe up. Like, come on! Come on! Okay. That's Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Tim's kind of holding the ground. I love it. Strategically a bad spot for me to be in, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Brings us to Fang. Fang keeps look gets one last uh, look through the uh, gear if he can help it. Okay. Are you going to take your entire turn to do so, or are you taking a quick glance? So I was going to take a quick glance, see what I, if I can grab anything useful, and then okay. ju and I might actually stay because I have an advantage ish point from the back. Okay. So we'll see. Okay. Sounds <laughs> like a plan. Go ahead and give me a D1. Um, since you're staying and, and searching, go ahead and uh, give me a D100 roll for me, please. 75. You find uh, a an additional fireman's act. And this is, uh, this is very similar to what Dim's is. It's not outfitted with the barbed wire and quite uh, the same potency. Um, but this functions uh, the same as the War Club, where if it's a modified 18 plus, you get to add ultimate to it. That's a good so you both you both have axes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Much better. Okay, and you're able to kind of position yourself where you have not attracted the creature's attention yet, thing. That is my turn. Okay. Hey, Grin. Uh, he's... Pigrin sees uh, Dim run to the edge of the acid and sees the flamethrower dude coming toward and he says, oh, oh, holy moly, that's that's not good. That's a, <laughs> a, a dim dang bluster buck. I'm gonna roll up here. And uh, I... Pull out the SMG. I'm in ne just inside near range, which lets it be easy. I'd like to do a called sh called shot on the regulator of the flamethrower fuel tank. Okay. Uh, let's see. So hard shot would you know ordinarily be a hard shot. It's a little bit easier close range. 
Um, so yeah, I was going to say, if, if, I was good. If, if, yep. if that, and I have a, I'm plus two on deck, so I'll take that shot. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to burn my grit. Yep. If that's cool with you guys. Yep, go uh, for it. We need to get in front of these. Uh, D10, Ten. is that correct? And then plus your adrenaline. Yeah, uh, yes. Well, that's what I say, because I got a plus six adrenaline. So let's yeah. Start. Nice. There you go, boom. Yes, sir. Good good call. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is that... there is a chance that it yes. explodes as cool. you hit the regulator. I'm going to roll a d6. If it's a 6, it's an explosive, like, concussive explosion. That's Otherwise, nice. you just catch him on fire, which is pretty good as it is. Yeah. It's a 6! <laughs> Clutch! <laughs> nice! So this thing, this thing explodes and um, rocks the cavern that you're Beautiful. in. Beautiful. Beautiful. And everyone that's nearby... Um, not only does acid splash, but also it is a concussive explosion in the cavern. So you all need to make a con roll. If you fail the con roll, that's what hits you first, is the con roll. So everybody give a con roll. If you fail, you gain additional adrenaline. Mm -hmm. That's a 10. That yeah. one. Here we go, Jax. Focused up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that and that one... You actually end up taking four more adrenaline, oh big gosh. And uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm say that now at, at eleven. Ugh. Okay, you've gone over ten. It was a nat one plus four more. That's a madness check if I've ever seen one. So you like the insanity of this moment oh. as you are getting you are getting flashbacks. That hurts. <laughs> well, he has to roll the actual result. Yes, he does. Okay. You are getting flashbacks to your previous encounter with the chemist. The acid burns still linger. Give me a d20 to see how you handle it. Come on, Figrin. Okay. Not all rolls are hard for two not rounds. Not the greatest, but not the worst. Okay. Well, two rounds here. And I, I'm at 11. Whoa. Hard for two rounds. And that's just for And, Figrin. um... What I'm going to say is until that gets below 10, that adrenaline, you're going to be rolling a D10 for any future madness. So if crazy stuff keeps happening, you'll get like guaranteed bad results. Um, I understand. Just because it's gotten so high. So your your gun's kind of like shaking your hands. Everyone that is on the bank, so you three all take three damage from acid as okay. the explosion kind of splashes up. Did, this when, guy when gets the explode. Oh, so you're you're getting right to it. That was what I was going to ask. Yep. The when the guy. explosion happens and you guys kind of like pick yourselves up off the, you know the ground, the acid's kind of like hitting you. Um, you know, the, it's still like dripping from the ceiling, and you kind of see where this guy was. Uh, you see that he, he's been dismantled. I mean, he exploded. So, um, despite his resilience to physical harm. <laughs> Worth it. He has been taken. He has been taken off the board with the explosion. Nice. But the other, the other uh, guy has hit up against the wall, and you see him get up out of the acid. The acid dripping off of the apparatus. His skin healing back into place, still carrying the metal wire, undaunted as he continues forward. An eventful turn, and I believe that brings it to my turn, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, he's gonna roll up a d6 to see who he targets, and that is Dim. Mm -hmm. And what he is gonna do is roll. Um, let me see what I got for these guys. What did I write down? Okay, so he gets uh, he <laughs> brings this big cable around, and he cracks it like a whip. And he is using this big steel cable as a bullwhip. And he, you know, takes it and tries to uh, get your leg, Dim. And he okay. has a plus six to strength. And we are going to roll to see if you hold your ground or if he rips you off the bank into the acid. Okay. Oh. Wow. Hooray. Hooray. Oh, I'll take that now, one. Am I rolling against that or is that just fail? Um... 
I would like you to still roll against that. Okay. And I think you're going to beat it. Yeah. Yep. The third. Okay. 13. So he does trip you up as strong as he is, and this cable kind of rips, but you, you like, he pulls, and you're able to kind of like rip your leg back. And you are still on the bank. He wasn't able to pull you into the acid. And he cracks the whip again to try and get Figrin. All right, here we go, Figrin. Rolling against a... You need to beat a 21 on strength. And it's hard, though. Shoot. There's no way. Mm. Uh, is there anything I can do? Can I jump in front of him or anything? Can we... Uh, you've already, we you've already gotten tripped up. That? Yeah. Could, okay. You could, could burn, burn a, grit. a grit, but you've got to be. He has a left into the guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean... you, you have the grit for him to like absorb the acid damage he's about to be taking and things like that. But I think it could be incredibly difficult to actually beat the sure. beat the yeah. whip itself. Okay. So what you see, Dim, is you kind of like pick yourself up off the ground as you see Figrin getting pulled with this metal cable into the acid and his face goes beneath the surface. This stuff uh, begins to do its work and you take two damage, Figrin, from the acid. And you see this a, small, a small bubble kind of pop up as he gets pulled in them and you get back on your feet. And that brings us back to you guys. Jax? Oh, man. Oh, you're, you're still muted. Um, yeah. Oh man, I want to I want to start messing around with this technology, see if there's something, but like I need to spend another round now that a subject A has gone, thankfully. Mm -hmm. I need to spend another round looking up subject B to make it easy for everybody. Okay. You spend the round doing the work. You're flipping through the pages furiously as the acid is dripping off the wall. Your ears are still ringing, and you kind of see these notes for subject B. Specifically, what you see are these uh, wiring, these like tubes and wiring harnesses that's been set up on this apparatus. And you see specifically notes of like, you know, like danger uh, notes on certain ones. And it, you know, like this is you know, crucial and it's all kind of like these hand scrawled notes that you're trying to interpret i need you to do 10 uh effort uh with intelligence it's you like using your intelligence you're like deciphering these notes it is basic effort to basically figure out what part of this apparatus is the crucial piece that you can disable okay so you so can you go ahead and start working on that with this just turn. straight effort or do you want me to roll intelligence as well that is going to be, um, let me think about this. So you spent a round, it's all going to be easier as you've been spouting that information. Yep. So you're actually going to start doing effort on your next turn to okay. decipher this, where you see you, you have like the code that you need to okay. break down so and that just... will be aided by your intelligence. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just start rolling next turn, straight effort, basic plus my intelligence bonus. That's correct. Got it. Got it. So Jax, Jax is yelling out, you know, kind of how this guy is put together. Basically, the notes from the craftsman himself is he's kind of reading through the redacted black marker and insight that uh, valuable insight to be offered. And everything done against subject B will be easy. Your black marker nice. can't withstand my highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> A true battle of the pins. That is clutch. <laughs> Okay, that brings us back to Dim. You've seen Figrin pulled under the pulled under the the goo, the acid. This looks deep, right? Like he disappeared under it. Like he's submerged. he was he was flat as he was pulled in, so I think it would probably be about waist deep. But yeah, it was deep enough where it, like he okay. went completely under. Yep. Okay. Uh, Figrin, I'm going to. I'm. <laughs> can I like run and like, uh, like anime with the hammer or the axe and try to <laughs> chop the cable? Mm. I, I just want to like jump into the acid and try to chop yeah. the cable on my way in. To okay. Him. You can definitely give it a shot. 
Go ahead okay. and give me a... It's just straight up strength since you're not going directly against subject V. So it's just straight up strength that is cut through the cable. Okay. <clears throat> so this wouldn't be easy then because it's not against him, it's against the cable. Yes. Right. Ooh. That's not going to do it. Okay. Okay. So you hack at this thing and you get like you know, you, the, the axe vibrates in your hands as it, you haven't quite hit the weak point to break it apart yet. Okay. And being in the acid, you take additional four damage. Four. Uh, eat away at you. Four. That's great. That's brutal. Okay. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough being in here. Okay. That's it for me. Okay. Well, I appreciate the attempt. Try, I tried my best, man. Sorry. Yeah, that brings us to Fang. What do you do, Fang? So, I'm willing to lose the knife because I have an axe and that's kind of useful. Uh, and I have the flail too, so I have weapons. So I'm going to try to chuck the knife. It'll be easy, but it's hard to throw that particular knife, so it'll be, a 50, it'll be normal. Okay. Nope. Okay. Um, Ladders in the far side there. Oh, I don't like always suggesting the grit thing, but I think we're at this point where we need to to use it. Are all, are all good with me using it? Yeah, you can you can take so, it if you really want. Before okay. before you use it. Okay. Jax has been calling out how these things are extremely resilient to physical harm. They're they're what? healing they're healing their flesh back where the acid burns, and he yeah. has not yet figured out how to disable them otherwise. So I, as a GM, I'm not. You can certainly make the choice if you desire, but yeah. throwing a knife at him is mm -hmm. not going to accomplish very much. Okay. Okay. So before you kind of sink some grit into it, like you you've got to figure out another way to take this guy down besides just stabbing him. Okay. Now I'm going to look for more stuff in the lockers. Okay. Okay, go ahead and give me another D100 roll. Okay. Okay. You find a set of mindful stones. If you take a round to focus on circling the stones in your palm, you reduce your adrenaline by three. Oh, nice. Mindful stones. Stress so apparently these guys working in the in the lab were, were stressed out themselves. It's difficult work conditions, and you see that they, in order to maintain their zen, that they're precise and difficult work, some of them have these sets of mindful stones to help them focus. You can reflavor it as a fidget spinner, though. <laughs> good too. You good. Fidget spinner's good, too. I've only seen diagrams of those things. <laughs> All right. Find this mindful stones you kind of toss over all the gear, looking for something more useful. Brings us to Figrin. You're so, under under the the acid, and you're being pulled by the whip. You've been pulled in, and I think he's released the whip at this point, seeing you kind of come under the acid. Everything's difficult for you, but you have your action. What do you do? I am under. I am under under the surface of the acid. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you kind of you could pop back up and do something on this turn. Okay. Um, and you said he let go of the he let go of the whip. He no longer is. He's in. getting ready for another crack. That's correct. Oh, I'm, I'm 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 grappled by it or not? I'm I'm confused. It hit me with the description yeah. one more time, so I understand. No problem. So he pulled you in with the whip. And then kind of loosened it up, and he's pulling it back over his head for another crack. So you are okay. Not so I am. I'm right not now. grappled. I understand. Currently, that's um, correct. I am going to uh, grab Dim and try to pull us both out of here. I'm plus two on strength, but it's hard. And that's a no-go. You weren't quite fast enough before you could take the damage, but you get both of you free to continue to take it. 
So both of you take an additional three damage from acid. My shield. And <clears throat> what I'm gonna, or what I have neglected to up to this point, it is supposed to be every turn you are taking basic damage that you are in the acid. Mm -hmm. So I have neglected that up to this point. We're not gonna retroactively do anything, but you're in there every turn, no matter whose turn it is. You're just gonna continue. Oh. To take Oh. So it's gonna get it's gonna get real nasty if this guy continues his work. So okay, great. Good yep. to know. Well, I'm I'm at two. I'm gonna go down the next the next turn. Why pretty, don't pretty you soon. run? You're back in the bank. You're both back in the bank and out of the acid now. So oh, you got okay. that far, but right. you, you didn't get out before you took the more damage. So Understood. here we go. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mm hmm. All right. You got them both out there, and um. I'm gonna roll a dice to see who gets targeted mm -hmm. on this turn because it's a it's a big hit no matter who it may be. Bang is definitely in reach of this thing as well, and the art may not show it, but it, him kind of on the on the uh, on the bank over here. So it's gonna be a d6, and Fang would be one two, figuring his three four, etc. So that is dim. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have another another roll for strength here. Pull you back in. <laughs> you need to beat a 23. Why did you roll a 17, JD? Get That's that in that high. 20. I'm calling it. That's I, too I feel high. it. Oh. oh, did you get? Did you beat it? Or is it tied? What does he have? 23. 23 total. 23 total. <laughs> it's tied. I have plus four. It's tied. Okay. So you are not. I lose a acid. tie, right? Oh. Okay. You are not pulled in the acid. Okay. And you now have a hand on this thing where you are grappling with him and you are having like a tug exactly of war. Exactly what I wanted. Yes. Nice. As you are pulling nice. at this case and you are preventing him from taking an additional action this Great. turn. Great. Nicely but done. But you, you are completely, uh, this is taking all of your effort and you're going to yeah. have to continue to hold on to kind of hold this whip in place. As, okay. this, as this thing is just starting to rip it out of your hand, it's kind of like shredding through whatever gloves you may be wearing and starting mm -hmm. to rip into the flesh as he's just like starting to slide it back out. Okay, worth it. That brings us back to Jax. All right, Jax. Okay. I'm going to roll my basic effort. That yes, is... sir. So I'm up to seven. I could burn a grit and guarantee okay. that we figure it out. No. Or I can wait another turn. No. Burn it. Uh, yeah, burn it. Okay, so that isn't another. That's another fifteen. So I've I've gotten up to twenty-three. <laughs> nice. Yes, sir. Good, good. You see, <coughs> small a uh, small note in the corner of one of the pages that catches your eye, and as you kind of piece it together, it, it traces back to you. And it says like C apparatus and all this kind of things, regulator, all this kind of thing, and it goes through and it starts to mention how any uh, it, that how excited the chemist was that any sort of effort to destroy uh, to destroy the control mechanisms in uh, on in the field would prove could prove disastrous for any opponents. But he created a failsafe for himself at at the base. And as you see the diagram that he writes out and the wiring that was required and the programming that was required, and you trace this through the pages, you finally land on a page and you see the completed product across the pool of acid near the machine where the creatures came from. You see a failsafe toggle that may shut the in fact shut the creatures down via remote control and you realize that this is the failsafe the uh, chemist built into it that's it I'm gonna probably yell to fang and just be like fang there is a lever on the far side of the room you i can see it i don't know if he can <laughs> see it because of the the stone or whatever but like right. i can see it totally you gotta pull it <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Dim. We're gonna have another strength roll here. See if you hold on. Oh, okay. Oh, come on, man! You're killing me. <laughs> oh no! Oh. oh. Dim. The whip cracks and pulls away a piece of your gear. Mm-hmm. 
whatever is the third item, you have lost it, and it falls into the acid and is corroded beyond repair. That's my tarp. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I don't care. Okay. Tarps, the tarps are good, though. Tarps. <laughs> you know what? Between my shield and my barbed wire, the tarp can go. Best case scenario. Uh, do I still get a turn, or was that the turn? Fighting with this cable. Turn. Okay, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Figuring you've got to get out of here. Um, is there any way I can rodeo myself on top of him? Can I get like up there, like bull rider style? It would require a a, a trip through the acid. Um, I don't really see a way for you to avoid. He, he's sitting on an island, kind of using this whip to keep you out of reach. So yeah, I don't you'd know. Have to move if, through the acid. I don't know if we have much choice, really, to be honest. Uh. Uh, but 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 we all know what needs doing now, and Fang is the closest yeah. one to, to, to get yeah, there. Yeah, but if he, he's gonna drag me back into the acid anyway, so I thought you're not you're not grappled, yeah. right? No, but he's got another turn. Like my the next turn, I'm going back in regardless. I'd like but to get a you... swing on him if I can. You know what I'm saying? Like if no. you get out of range. Then it doesn't matter. Then I can just <coughs> get up in his face. I think. And hopefully by time. I mean, unless we both run away from here. Is that That's the plan? That's what I was I thinking. Mean... Yes. Both oh, I think I'll oh, okay. both run and I go up. <laughs> I don't... Oh, Dem doesn't like to run. All right. I know she doesn't like to run. Yeah. That's why I'm like you. Yeah. 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 Um... Okay. Man, this feels wrong, and I don't know how long it will reach. I still want to protect Jax, though, so I guess I'll just back up next to him. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Alright, Fang. Bolts up the... up through the acid to the lever. Can I get there? See here. You would be just getting out of the bank of the acid would be the kind of a full sprint. Oh, I was thinking going th like through it like okay. Through here. And then I know we we're trying to do the one grid per person, but I feel like this is worth burning it to just snap it down, snap the lever down and destroy this thing <coughs> I, to the crew. I don't have a problem with that mm. it's loving if it stops this monster yeah, yeah. I'm gonna burn okay. our last word and do it okay moving through the acid you take three damage okay. and you move your way through and you kind of move the toggle and you flip the switch and uh, immediately, the creature slumps over on the island, and you see it kind of just like fall flat on its back. An eerie quiet fills the cavern. And Fang, as you kind of like nearly breathless look up from the toggle switch and the quiet resumes, you see a single camera up in the corner above the machine that has been watching this entire event. And then, Jax, you hear uh, new beeps on the console behind you. And I'm going to assume that you investigate said beeps. Oh, definitely. I like beeps and boops. The beeps and boops reveal uh, text that scrolls out. And just imagine the sound that is in the Alien movies when the text reads out on the monitors. You know, like the typewriter... And it says, thank you for the valuable data. The test is now concluded. And you begin to see the machines were up to a new ferocity. And they begin to overclock. And you see the console shut down. And you can only imagine that this is a self-destruct sequence that has been initiated. What do y'all do? Fang would see more as he goes up. One moment. 
thing as you kind of go up you see uh, a trail leading out to this other side and um to where you can see that there's more to the cave and that would you could see that would what is on the other side of that security door what do you guys do uh, yeah. Since Fang was able to uh, flip the switch, we actually skipped my one turn at the end of that following oh, him. That is true. I beg your pardon. Right, I, just, I, I wanted to uh, Go for it. run this way and try to take a recovery roll if mm-hmm. I can. Good call. Go for it. Am I still under hard or are my two turns complete? So, here's what I would like to do. I'm sitting here, I'm tired, I know it's late for a couple of you guys, it's like a lot later, and um, there isn't too much else to really, there's not much drama or risk at this point, you guys would just be, be basically making your way out, so you good with just wrapping it up, because yeah. I don't think there's, yeah. there's not too much else to do here, and I think that, that would just be a good, a good ending point. Works. So... <laughs> Uh, you see, as you as you're kind of making your way out, the the machines kind of malfunction. They basically put these self destruct sequences in place. <laughs> um, this guy has sacrificed his uh, laboratory in order to kind of see how these figures would perform against you. And as you and I can only imagine using a blowtorch or some other methodology, you break through the security door, dig through the acid, whatever it may be. You find your way where there's actually an exit, the exit that Rutha described in her original description, uh, to get out to the street level, um, just near where the apartment would be. But one thing that you notice as you're moving across, you see, uh, you see more of these canisters, and they are down in the acid itself, protected by the acid in a way. And you see that you can't tell if there's figures in them, if they're empty, if there's anything else going on. But these are the like the very same canisters that were used um, where these subject A and subject B emerged from. So you can only imagine that the chemist has plans for uh, either that there are more waiting there inside the <laughs> acid or that um, or that there's plans for more. It's difficult yeah. to tell. But a nefarious scheme is at place, and um, is willing to sacrifice this space at least. And as you move your way up to the street level, you so you find yourselves up on the street level, just near where the apartment building uh, would be, and that is where we wrap our session. Are we surrounded by rangers? No, you're not. The, the sneaky approach has proven successful, and you find yourselves in prime position. And we'll 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 bring ourselves back to this map. Cool. For more detail, maybe in a text RP or even uh, in the session or whatever. But basically, you're kind of up on street level now, and uh, this building here is the apartment where Rutha found the vault. Going with the birds on top. Nice.